like to call to order the March 14, 2016 Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. Could we have the roll, please? Mr. Robinson? Here. Mr. Walker? Here. Mr. Sporhays? Here. Mr. Cange? Here. Mr. Spinelli? Here. Ms. Bailey? Here. Ms. Barker? Here. Mr. Strike? Here. Mr. Spring has been excused. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I don't believe we have minutes to adopt under special order of business. Uh, disclosures. Danielle? None. Greg? Yes, on the consent agenda, D1, A, and B, I was not present and would therefore be abstaining from any vote on that piece. And the, uh, let's see, can we approach the, on the case that's coming up for re, any disclosures at that time? Should we disclose if that case is presented or? Um. I, I think we'd like disclosures now. If there's a, I, I well, believe, there, Madam Clerk, if, if we, because if we have people that were not here at the last uh, meeting, and, and this is their, yeah, yeah. So if you have a disclosure, you ought to, you ought to, you ought to have made it at the last time we heard it, but you could make it again. Well, it's, it's subsequent. So it's a, now we're going to have this. We do have a letter that came from the petitioners that was subsequent to the vote okay. that was received. Um, so that's a disclosure that I wanted to put on the table. Okay. Um, there was a phone call that was made, although it was cut off and cut short. Um, there was no bearing on that, but a phone call had was, I received a phone call from the petitioner, but dropped that phone call because it wasn't appropriate. Yeah. Um, and there was some ex part communications that took place after the meeting on the March 7th that was up here at the podium that I dismissed myself from after that meeting. So the, from a disclosure standpoint of these activities, I just wanted to make sure that everyone knew of that there was different contacts that were in place. So the, the communication that you're referring to after the case, by, by bo both sides of the case? You and I were having a conversation, the petitioner approached. Yeah. Um, there was an interruption, and then I dismissed myself from the conversation. Okay. Remember the nature of that conversation? It, I, you know what? I don't because I removed myself from it. I had questions on the case and how it proceeded, but I removed myself from the conversation entirely. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I mean, I recall when he approached, the issue came up um, whether or not the staff determination of, of whether, whether or not it should be, how the draft land use plan map was, was either recommending for or against. That was the nature of the conversation. And, and my point to that was there was a conversation, but I was already tracking with that. That was a conversation you and I were having. Yeah. So this wasn't a conversation that he right. and I were having. Right. Great. Thank you. Yep. Mr. Walker. Uh, with regard to case 2016-0011, um, uh, I guess we're going to rehear that tonight or reconsider it. Um, I have list. I was not present for the original meeting or uh, public hearing, but I have listened to the audio tapes and. Um, so I guess I'm ready uh, for that. And uh, as a side note, I, I don't think it's relevant, but I do have a personal relationship with the applicant, but I don't have any interest in the project. So. I also need to disclose that in the matter of case 2016-0018, um, I was absent, so I, I will not be voting on that resolution tonight. Thank you. And I'm, I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Cange to ask you a few questions related to your disclosure um, uh, that you said related to the, the, the potential to rehear, at least the motion for reconsideration. That's up. Thank you. Just Commissioner Walker, I, I know you mentioned you um, got a relationship with the applicant, but do you have a substantial financial interest or substantial private interest in the matter before no. the body? No. No. Um, does the knowledge you possess about the case, is it, is it possessed by a large group or just by you as an individual? Uh, no, I have not discussed the private okay. interest with the applicant. Uh, and I would move uh, to direct Mr. Walker to participate in case 2016-0011.
Please vote. You are directed to participate. Uh, Mr. Cange. Thank you. I have a couple uh, in regard to case 2016-0011. Um, I was not at the March 7th meeting, however, I did listen to the audio tape uh, up until the point when the vote was passed. Uh, in regard to the consent agenda, I was not here for 2016-009 or 2016-0018, so seeing that we have enough people, I'll just abstain from voting on the entire consent resolution unless somebody pulls 2016-002. Uh, Thank you, that's all. Mr. Spinelli, disclosures. Yeah. Um, I was recused from resolution 2016-008, and I was absent from resolution 2016-010, so I will not be voting on it. Thank you, Ms. Parker. Nothing to disclose. Brandon. Uh, thank you. As far as the case 2016-0011, I was absent as well from the March 7th meeting, but have listened, listened to the tape. And uh, as far as the consent agenda, I was absent on items B and C. Would you like the case numbers? Uh, no, I, you got that, Corey? No, that's fine, B and C, so you won't be voting on those. Thank you, and, and I'd like to remind uh, the commission that I, I did make a disclosure in the matter of case 2016-0011, and I was uh, directed to participate um, in that case. C2 annual election of officers. Um, I have been serving as the chair and Mr. Cage is the vice chair. Uh, we hold the elections annually. Um, is, there, is there a motion on the table related to elections? Mr. Strike. Motion by Mr. Strike is to keep me and Tony in the hot seat, seconded by Mr. Walker. Um, is there any discussion? You okay with that? And I'm okay with that too. Um, please vote. All right, we stay sitting where we are. Case, case 2016-0011, request to rezone from R3 district to R4 multifamily residential motion for reconsideration. Um, here's, we, we, since I've been on the commission, we've not had a, a situation arise, but uh, we did hear the case. We, we opened and closed uh, the public hearing, and then we deliberated as, the, as a commission, planning commission, and uh, at that time, a vote was passed for four in support, two, two opposed, uh, meaning you need five votes to pass, and so that was uh, deemed to fail, which is a recommendation by the Planning Commission for a request to rezone from R3 to R4. Um, within 24 hours of that decision, uh, uh, Mr. Strike, who was on the prevailing side, spread notice of reconsideration, um, which is a, a parliamentary procedure, which means then that this case reappears on our agenda tonight. And what is before us is a motion to reconsider. So Mr. Strike can make a motion to reconsider um, with, a, with a second. Uh, it will have discussion without a second. It will fail. Thank you, Ms. Bailey. Mr. Strike, would you like to speak to your motion? Yes, I would. Um, as follow-up to the March 7th meeting, um, there was some immediate confusion um, that had been discussed at the commissioner's level and that this print this prompted my move for reconsider or notice for reconsideration within the allowable timeline I believe it was 24 hours um, in which case I made that motion or made that notice to staff on March 8th and so this evening I would like to move for this reconsideration for case 2016-0011 um, my, my intent for this is that there was confusion. I, I am part of, I was confused, but it, I don't know if it's going to change my vote necessarily, but it, as far as the land use maps and how the, what was applicable and the appropriate zoning, we were dealing with adjacent zoning, so there was some confusion that lies with the, 
whether it's interpretation or whether it's which map is being used and so forth that I believed gave rise to the need for this reconsideration and I would point out that this idea for reconsideration happened totally independently and that was done here on the base and so that's why I had disclosed the notifications and notice that had appeared from the applicant and I would like to go on record that what the applicant was trying to do while I can understand it more or less pissed me off and so would but I'm here tonight saying you know let's reconsider but um, let's not ever have that happen again okay any anyone else wishing to, to comment on the motion Please vote on the motion to reconsider. And I'll remind you, if the if the vote if the motion passes, um, we will resume at the point just prior to where the uh, the vote was taken, basically. And I, at that point, we'll restate the motion that's on the table. So the motion to reconsider is passed at this point. The motion on the floor was to move to approve the rezoning from R3 to R4 for Lot 1, Block 15B, 3rd Edition Anchorage, as written, moved by Commissioner Spring and seconded by Commissioner Barker. I think at this point, um, rather than moving straight to commissioners, I'd like to, to go to staff. Um, I think the, the packet now consists of, and hopefully there's copies out there, but we have a, a letter C3 from the petitioner and a three-page staff report uh, from Sharon Ferguson and I'm going to ask Sharon to walk through that letter at this point. Thank you Mr. Chair. The 2006 draft land use plan map otherwise known as the LUPM is a draft and should not be used to make land use decisions. The map is subject to change or it may be unclear and need clarification in the later draft refinements before it can be interpreted properly. Further is not yet an adopted element of the comprehensive plan. The LUPM is mentioned in the staff report so that the commissioners are aware that high density residential, residential development is being considered for the area. Staff brought the draft LUPM and a portion of the accompanying a narrative to the PNZ meeting last week in response to a request from Chair Robinson. This may have generated discussion of the draft LUPM. Mr. Anderson stated at the meeting that his project would be five units with a density of 31 DUA. However, as pointed out in his letter, the density of the multifamily neighborhood zone is still within the density proposed by the draft LUPM which, with which staff concurs. Mr. Anderson mentions in his letter that the Long Range Planning Division staff at the pre-application meeting supported the request for rezone based on the draft LUPM, which indicates higher residential density in the area. This remains unchanged. The Planning Department believes the proposed rezone is consistent with the draft LUPM. Comments from the Long Range Planning Division note that while the South Anchorage neighborhood area may not be expected to completely redevelop with this intensity, it can therefore reasonably, however, it can be therefore reasonable, however, to allow new infill development that meets the intensity proposed by this zoning change. Mr. Anderson asks which map guides decision making, the 2006 draft and PNZ concept approved LUPM or the 2016 draft LUPM that came out a couple of weeks ago. The answer is neither. The 1982 Anchorage Bowl Comprehensive Development Plan and the map that's within it that's called the Generalized Residential Intensity Plan guides, de guides decision making. However, in instances where the Anchorage 22, 2020 Anchorage Bowl Comprehensive Plan and specifically the land use policy map, which is within the Anchorage 2020 plan, differs in land use designations from the 1982 plan, then land use policy map has precedence. The Anchorage 2020 plan reads, the land use policy map sets the direction 
for the preferred form of long-term growth and development in the Anchorage Bowl. Mr. Anderson further inquires, following the Title 21 development standards for R3 and a 7,000 square foot property, it is not possible to achieve the density goal of the 2016 draft LUPM in order to provide the density goal of up to 35 DUA as indicated on the draft LUPM, the property will require rezoning to R4. The planning department concurs with this statement. Finally, Mr. Anderson questions whether the five online, online case comments in support of the rezone were provided to the commissioners with the case report. These comments were laid on the table the evening of the meeting as they were, were received after the packets were delivered to the commission on February 28th. In summary, the proposed rezone is consistent with the 2016 draft LUPM and the 2006 draft composite land use plan map. While the 1982 Anchorage Bowl Comprehensive Development Plan may indicate a lower residential density, density, it is the Anchorage 2020 Anchorage Bowl Comprehensive Plan that has precedence as it is the more recently approved plan. Therefore, the guiding document is the Anchorage 2020 Anchorage Bowl Comprehensive Plan and specifically the land use policy map that designates the subject area as redevelopment slash mixed use areas. These areas within the Anchorage Bowl allow medium to high density residential uses. The planning department understands the concept of medium to high density at this time. Medium density is a 15 to 35 DUA and high density is over 35 DUA. Additionally, Title 21 under 2103-160F2B reads, the designation of areas at or near boundaries on the comprehensive plan shall be interpreted in accordance with the goals, objectives, policies, and guidelines of the comprehensive plan, including locational criteria for designations on the comprehensive plan map. That's all I have. Mr. Strike. Yeah. First off, I'd like to thank the staff for that, um, that helpful. Thank you. Um, and this is a general question I, to the staff, I believe. As this is a rezoning from R3 to R4, and each has its own height restrictions, and this is a outlie of in the particular block if this were to pass, can this commission place a height restriction on a specific piece of property during this course, or are we subject only to the rezoning and subject then to the um, requirements of that rezoning? Um, if the commission wanted to place a special limitation on it, they could. That's why in my staff report, I had looked into what was possible under the bonus points that he could, that he could get if he met all the criteria. And we thought it really couldn't go over, I think what I said was 41 feet or 42 feet. I did have my staff report in front of me, but I don't have, But it's in there, but it would be very, very difficult because the site is so small for him to be able to meet, meet those bonus points. So I think he's probably, I think Seth has said he would be, thank you, at about 35 feet is what he was proposing. Which, which is the height limitation on a B, on a um, R3 lot versus I believe 45 for an R4. Well, and, I, and I do recall that during the testimony, but again, that's, this, this is a change in zoning and what ends up coming before the staff through whatever permitting process and so forth would be separate. So again, what's said here, I'm just looking at avenues to, if this proceeds forward in this light, can the commission, what I'm hearing from you is that the commission can put a restriction on. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a special limitation. Under the R3, the height limit is 35 feet. And under the R4, it's 45 feet. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Any other questions for staff? I would just to add um, to what I believe was the confusion. Um, the staff report on page 8 goes into a, um, a discussion about the draft land use plan map. Right, and then the testimony was that 
when it was looked at more closely is that the draft land use plan map wasn't actually recommending high intensity urban center in that area. It was rep recommending something else. I, I think that was really the base of the confusion, if I'm not mistaken. But what I'm, what I'm hearing now from the staff analysis is really that type of analysis and that type of discussion will be omitted in future staff reports until there's an adopted land use plan map, all the way through the assembly adopted. Mr. Chair, yes, I just had two sentences in the staff report regarding the draft land use plan map on page eight. Um, yes, it, until it becomes um, part of a comprehensive plan, it's probably a good idea not to look at it. I mean, I would not to mention, you know, not to say that staff wouldn't have also two sentences saying this is what it says, but probably not a great deal more than that. Okay, so the motion is to recommend. Uh, recommend to the assembly the approval clearly the in order to find affirmatively towards that motion um, you have to find that the case meets the approval like criteria as outlined in the original staff report that's the motion that we have on the table uh, anyone wishing to speak to that motion Please vote. The, the motion passes. Are there any findings? Danielle. Uh, I'm going to, I think, pretty much just reiterate what I said at our last meeting. Uh, one is that it's consistent with the neighborhood and the community. Directly to the right of it is a residential area that has much higher zoning. And to the left, there are some duplexes which are lower, but it allows for a transition in the community. Um, as a reiteration of what was said tonight in the staff report, um, it is clearly consistent with the, um, the Anchorage 2020 Anchorage Bowl Comprehensive Plan um, in that it is of medium to high density which is defined by them as between 15 to 35 DUA. And um, specifically, it applies to designation of areas at or near boundaries on the comprehensive plan map to be interpreted in accordance with the goals, objectives, policies, and guidelines of the comprehensive plan, including locational criteria for designations on the comprehensive plan map. So even withstanding the fact that it clearly falls within the 15 to 35 as a 31 uh, DUA location, I think it also is consistent being that it's on the boundary and um, it's showing that it meets those qualifications. Thank you, Ms. Bailey. Ms. Barker. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I will also basically reiterate my comments made at the last meeting. Um, I also concur that the rezoning is consistent with the Anchorage 2020 Comprehensive Plan. It represents an infill opportunity of an underdeveloping property in an area that's kind of in the somewhat fluid border between two community councils. Um, it also represents um, an opportunity for a greater supply of affordable housing close in within an easily biking, walking, non-motorized transportation to the central business district and bus connections to other parts of the community. Thank you, Ms. Barker. I would add that, uh, you know, clearly in, during the public testimony we heard from uh, members of the South Addition Community Council the immediate neighborhood, many of whom did not support the request for rezone. We heard from some neighbors that did support uh, the rezoning, though as far as I could tell they were not in uh, the South Addition area, which boundary of which lies on the Cordova Street. Um, you know, that, that said, um, my findings um, are based in, in large part due to the fact that the neighborhood transitions at uh, clearly from more of a single family neighborhood that has a, a bit of a historic feel. I know that there's a, there's a process underway by which to identify that area. And uh, I think uh, the petitioner has made the case and, and, and I believe it's an, it's an accurate one, which is as you transition to the south side of the road, uh, you get into some multifamily. Clearly there's larger multifamily to the east of the property and newer multifamily to the south of the property. Um, so within that, I, I do find this uh, recommendation consistent. Yeah. 
terms of an appeal, um, an individual may have appeal rights relating to any action the Planning and Zoning Commission takes except commission recommendations to the assembly which are not appealable. Since this, uh, this recommendation is just that, it's a re this action here tonight is a recommendation to the Anchorage Assembly, um, there's no appeal based on our, our decisions here this evening. You will have an opportunity for both a public hearing um, at the assembly level uh, at the time that the assembly uh, takes this case up. Um, generally, I don't know what the guideline is, but generally six to eight weeks from now or something along those lines. So with that, we've concluded our uh, deliberation on that case, and next up is the consent agenda. And I get a motion to approve the consent agenda. Thank you, Mitzi. Is there a second? Thank you. Any items wishing to be pulled other than the disclosures about not voting? Any opposition to approving the consent agenda? Seeing none, the consent agenda is approved. Next up, case 2016-0015. Uh, this is uh, an ordinance amending Title 21 regarding telecommunications facilities, cell towers, repealing and, re and, and reenacting AMC subsection 210500040K. There's been a request to postpone the case to the 18th. Um, could I get that motion on the table, please? Mitzi. So just, just motion to postpone to 418. So move to postpone case 2016-0015 to April 18th, 2016. Thank you, Ms. Barker. Uh, seconded by Mr. Cange. Is, is there any comment? If not, I have some, but... Uh, I would just like to uh, point out that uh, there are significant changes to this, which we have been involved in a lot of work sessions going back and forth on the language. I know it says the public hearing is closed. Maybe more for clarification, what would be the procedure on that, Mr. Chair? So, and I'll, I'll defer to staff, but, uh, you know, as it states right now, the public hearing uh, has been opened and closed on an ordinance. I, I think we're anticipating a fairly substantially changed S version to that ordinance. So, it, do we have the op, uh, option here this evening, staff, to, to suggest that that case be reopened for public hearing? Mr. Chair, could I confer with the other planners tomorrow and let you all know then? Well, I'm, what I'm concerned about, I'm, I'd rather have it in our motion, actually, because it may uh, make your ability to, to uh, I'd actually like to hear from the commission what, what the commission feels related to the public hearing. Then you get what, how we stand on it uh, one way or the other. So anyone, anyone wishing to comment on public hearing? Mr. Gange. Like I said, I'll just restate that um, if this document is substantially changed from from what we've been working on, then I feel that it should go back um, through the, the notice and the public um, hearing. That's so, all I'd, I'd say to that. Ms. Barker? I concur with Mr. Cange. I think to not have a public hearing is dying to really um, would not improve the process. The public needs an opportunity to examine the changes and to present additional public comment, therefore. What I would um, entertain then is a, is a motion to amend the main motion to uh, recommend that we reopen the public hearing. Mr. Chairman, why don't I just withdraw the motion and start it over? Um, you can do that. It gets less messy. Okay. Go ahead. I mean, you're going to put me on the spot. In the matter of 2016-0015, uh, move to postpone the public to postpone consideration of this item to the meeting of April 18th, 2016, at which time the public hearing will be reopened. Thank you. There's uh, Ms. Ferguson's in the queue. Uh, go ahead, Sharon. I just wanted to mention, um, I don't know what what the status of is of the rewrites at this point, but if they're not quite ready, and given the fact that we have to have 21 days to put the public hearing notices and get that out, we may not meet that um, April 18th date. It may be very tight. Well, I can just only tell you the email emails that I've traded with with Ms. McConnell on this, and that is that we um, she reached out to us to try to schedule a work session, which we anticipated would be the time 
um, sometime the week before April 18th with the idea that the um, S version would be um, provided to us prior to that meeting. But I don't, and I, it did not sound like it would be 21 days mm -hmm. prior to that meeting. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I don't, I don't know what to do other than to suggest that we know there needs to be a public hearing associated with that. Um, if there's, you know, we, we also know that we've been asked to keep working on this at the schedule that the assembly wishes to maintain. So we're, there are people. I think on both the industry sides and the community sides that are pretty engaged in the matter. Um, so I feel comfortable that those that have been involved are, are going to be tracking what the ordinance is. So I think at this point, we'll just, our desire is to just clearly indicate that when this comes back to us, it comes back to us as a public hearing. That's all we're doing. If you further need to postpone it, then, okay. then that's what happens. But I was okay. told that this was. This is the only thing on the April 18th agenda, so this is what we were shooting for, um, and that's right. our—that's the at least that's the motion in front of us. Uh, Mitzi's made that motion. Is there a second to the motion? Is there any discussion on that motion to postpone? Please vote. That case, basically being called the cell tower ordinance, is postponed to. Uh, April 18th so as a reminder we are not meeting the first Monday of April but we are meeting the second Monday of April as well as this special meeting on the 18th thanks for those of you except mr. strike you're gonna have to participate via the work session process uh, so with that I think that concludes our cases here this evening is uh, Sharon are you back in the queue no okay Greg did you have something that, that question is, uh, when is the next work session? Tony and I were just talking about this. I, I, I haven't seen it come up on my calendar. So they sent out a doodle poll uh, as of Friday. They still hadn't heard from a couple of people. Um, I'll, so I'll get a little into the weeds if you want. So there were five people that responded to that doodle poll, and it looks like the majority, uh, four of people that responded could meet Wednesday, April 13th from 11.30 to 1, or Thursday from 11.30 to 1. That's the majority. And then there's some other days mixed in there with three people, Monday the 11th from 11.30 to 1, or Monday the 11th from 4 to 5.30. And that email um, obviously came from Erica, and I'm trying to find the exact date that it was sent out, was the 11th at 9.05 a.m., and she asked that we all respond by Friday, March 18th. So I, I sent her an email at the beginning of the meeting saying, hey, could you just send out the meeting invite and get it on people's calendars? I, I believe my only day available on that was the 11th. Was that Monday? Yeah. Okay. Well, I, you know, there's a couple ways to do it. It's a legislative item, so, so you're, 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 it's a little more flexible. You will have the ability to review the, the ordinance like we all will prior to the 11th. And at that point, if, if, uh, if you feel you have comments that you wish to, to pass along, I think we'd all, we'd all appreciate that. So that's how I, and, I, and I, it's a complicated ordinance. I appreciate everyone's attention to, to detail on it. And those of you that thought you got out of it, um, you're back in it, I guess. So without, uh, with, with anything else, uh, anything else from the commission? If not, could I have a motion to adjourn? Walker for once on that. Got him. Meeting is adjourned.